Over the years, most home builders have developed techniques that help them build good, sound roofs. But chances are you've had to deal with a problem that's all too common in new home construction, wavy or buckling roofs. The resulting complaints are a nuisance for all concerned. This American Plywood Association program will show you what causes most roof problems and how they can be prevented. APA representatives have evaluated hundreds of roof installations and assisted with claims and complaints. Through first-hand observation, APA has identified the most common causes of roof problems. More important, the association can help you prevent nagging expensive roof complaints with just a few simple construction techniques. In most cases, preventing the problem is much easier than correcting it after the home is completed. As a trade association representing the U.S. structural wood panel industry, one of APA's most important functions is quality assurance. That's why we're concerned when problems occur in roof systems that include structural panel sheathing. What causes buckling, sagging, and uneven roofs? How can these problems be avoided? APA field representative Randall Carter hears these questions and more every time he visits a builder or retailer who has received a roof complaint. Most of the time when someone calls for us to come out and look at a problem like this, they describe it as bubbly, uneven, or wavy in appearance. It gives us an idea of what the problem looks like, but not really a very good idea of why it looks that way. On the ground, looking up, many roof imperfections would appear to be the same in nature. The roof line may bow or curve down or appear to buckle and curve upward. Occasionally, the tabs on composition shingles will not be lying flat or there are ridges in the shingles. A natural assumption is that these imperfections are caused by defective sheathing. The fact is, most roof problems are the result of one or several construction factors. The most common is improper installation of structural panel sheathing. We visit many job sites each month looking at wavy and uneven roofs, but there's really no way to tell what causes these problems until we remove shingles. Once the shingles are removed, the bowing or buckling can usually be attributed to one or more of these factors. Uneven framing, which causes the roof nailing surface to be uneven. Improper spacing of the sheathing panels. And not nailing the panels according to the recommended guidelines. There is one other factor to consider when looking for problems that may cause a roof to have an undesirable appearance. Less than adequate ventilation in the attic space may also contribute to the problem. The problem of roofs that end up looking bubbly or wavy seems to be new and somewhat mysterious. Almost every time we trace one of these problems to improper spacing, nailing, or framing, and the builder says, I've been doing the same thing for 20 years, and he probably has, but things have changed a lot in the last 20 years, and these problems are showing up in larger numbers. In fact, the conditions that cause these roofs to appear uneven may have always been there. But until a few years ago, the dips, bows, and bulges were not readily visible. You may be using the same basic home building techniques you've always relied on, but the materials used today are different. In today's construction, we are building thinner. 15-pound roofing felt is not really 15 pounds today. It's closer to 10 or 11 pounds. But possibly the most significant change is in the composition shingles available today. These fiberglass matte shingles are also thinner and they are very rigid. They're made to lie flat and give the modern roof a long lasting look of smooth perfection. And they do, unless the roof is built with imperfections. Unlike the old organic roof shingles, which were pliable and hid mistakes, these new shingles seem to bring the bows and buckles out in the open for everyone to see. The American Plywood Association has some very easy to follow guidelines for proper installation of roof sheathing that will eliminate most of these problems. It takes almost no extra time to install the sheathing properly. One thing is for certain, it is far more troublesome and expensive to fix the problem after the shingles are in place than to do it right the first time. To understand why proper nailing and spacing of sheathing and level framing is so important, it is helpful to see what happens when these things are forgotten or ignored. 
Like virtually all building products, wood is constantly changing size, expanding and contracting with changes in the moisture content. This movement is not visible to the naked eye until you try to stop the natural process. There seems to be an almost natural instinct to nail panels tightly and neatly together. And when this is done, there's absolutely no room for expansion, which will occur. And when it does occur, the panel will relieve itself of this internal stress by bowing up or down at the point of least resistance. Now, I can demonstrate that with this little piece of plywood and this one thin dime. And I'm going to demonstrate that by taking this strip of plywood and putting it in between these two blocks that are already fixed so that it fits in tightly, but it's not too tight. And as you can see, it lays flat. Now, when I take the dime and I put it in the crack to show you what happens when the panel expands just that much, you can see how much the strip of plywood raises. And when it does this, we call this buckling. And when the panels buckle, they will move up or down. And when they do this, the shingles will move up or down with them. If the expansion is along the grain from short end to short end, the most common result is a bow downward or upward between the framing. If the expansion is across the four-foot width of the panel, the sheathing will ripple up off the trusses or rafters. Just as important as proper spacing is to make sure panels are adequately nailed or fastened to the framing. If nails are not placed close enough together or close enough to the edge of the sheathing, the wood will ripple up between nails or turn up on the edges. Remember, the wood sheathing is constantly expanding and contracting. Whether you are using plywood, composite panels, or oriented strand board, the first step in proper roof construction is to make sure you're starting from a level nailing surface. If one support is as little as one quarter inch lower or higher than the one next to it, an uneven roof may result. If you find the trusses or rafters to be uneven, always take steps necessary to make the nailing surface level. Make sure you have provided enough roof ventilation. If there isn't adequate ventilation, that may contribute to these other factors that will cause a roof to be uneven. Provide a minimum of 960 square inches of net free ventilation area for every 1,000 square feet of ceiling area, and at least half of the ventilation must be in the upper half of the roof. Never vent exhaust air from the kitchen or bath into a roof cavity or attic. Install baffles at the eaves to make sure ceiling or roof insulation doesn't block the ventilation path. With proper ventilation and level nailing surface, the sheathing can be installed. First, position the panel so it is square on the framing. As you nail or fasten the panel to the framing, it's very important to follow these minimum guidelines. Fasteners should be placed a minimum of six inches on center along the supported panel ends and edges. At the intermediate supports, fasten the panels 12 inches on center. Also, fasteners should be 3 eighths of an inch from the edges and ends of the panels. Remember, if the nails are too far from the edge of the panel, the wood may ridge up, making the joint plainly visible after the shingles are in place. A couple more hints that will help to keep the sheathing flat for years to come. Fasten or nail the panels in rows across the width or the four foot distance first. Then continue that same sequence down the length of the panel. This keeps internal stress from building up in the panels. And be certain to drive the fastener or nail flush with the panel surface. Anything left sticking up will cause the shingle to stick up as well. As you saw in our earlier demonstration, it is vitally important you leave enough space between panels along all edges to allow for the natural expansion that will occur. Unless the panel manufacturer recommends differently, you should leave one-eighth of an inch space between panels. The easy way to figure the correct end spacing is to measure the distance with an eight-penny common nail. This will give you one-eighth inch between panels without having to actually measure every time. You may also be able to use spacer type edge clips. However, be sure to check local building codes for specific requirements when using edge clips. When sheathing is properly installed on the roof framing, the spacing will be plainly visible.
To the uninformed, this may look like a mistake to leave holes in the roof. Just remember, when the roof is completed and the shingles in place, those spaces will never be seen. But if the panels are not fastened or spaced properly, the resulting bulges, ridges, and valleys are certain to be plainly visible. When the sheathing is all in place, you can quickly walk over the roof and saw cut or kerf out any tight joints that may have been missed. It will only take a couple of minutes to run your saw between any panels that don't have enough space. By the way, your blade will give you the 1 8 inch spacing you need. Once the roof sheathing is installed, cover it with a single underlayment or number 15 roofing felt as soon as possible. This will protect the panels from exposure to weather. If you use roofing felt, always be sure it is smooth. Flatten the felt or underlayment before you install shingles. Any wrinkles or bulges you leave will prevent the shingles from lying flat. With the APA rated sheathing and roof felt in place, delay the installation of asphalt or fiberglass shingles as long as possible. This will allow the sheathing to adjust to humidity and moisture conditions. If you started with a level nailing surface on the trusses or rafters, allowed proper spacing between panels, and fastened or nailed as recommended, you will avoid those embarrassing and costly buckles and bows that seem to pop up after the new homeowners have moved in. We find almost every time the cause of complaints about uneven roofs is the improper installation of the sheathing panels. Again, however, when you see one of these bows, ridges, or buckles, it's almost impossible to tell the cause of the problem without removing the shingles. If the felt or shingle underlayment is bunched up or wrinkled, it will cause the roof to have an uneven appearance in that spot. Another culprit is a nail or staple that was not driven straight or is not down flush with the shingle. This will cause the tabs on the shingles to poke up, also giving the roof an uneven look. Even though the builder may use the proper building techniques, the finished product will only be as good as the materials that are used. If lumber, structural panels, and other building materials are left unprotected in the weather, the finished appearance of the home may be affected. Always store panels on 2x4 stringers to keep them from direct contact with the ground and moisture. If plastic is used to cover the sheathing, make sure there is plenty of room for good air circulation around the bottom and sides of the stack. There is one more thing you can do to help prevent roof problems and ensure satisfactory performance. To guard against some of the challenges created by today's minimum materials, the American Plywood Association recommends building above the codes. At APA, we call it Code Plus. On the roof, Use thicker panels for premium quality. If you use heavier weight shingles or laminated or textured shingles, those small surface imperfections will not be as noticeable and there will be less risk of shingle ridging. Smooth, even roofs are visible testimony to quality construction. And quality is the feature more and more homeowners are demanding. By following the steps outlined in this APA program, you will give the new homeowner a long-lasting quality roof. To summarize, the first step is to handle and store your building materials properly to assure structural sheathing panels are clean and dry when you install them. Always check to make sure you are starting with a level nailing surface. Provide roof ventilation that meets or exceeds building codes. Be certain to space, then fasten roof sheathing panels according to recommended guidelines. Cover sheathing with shingle underlayment as soon as possible to minimize exposure to the weather. And install shingles according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Quality construction in the roof will stand out as the most visible sign of solid craftsmanship throughout the home.